Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Kissinger gets a Lifetime Achievement Award from The War Machine. We've got that story, plus the good news, bad news about Nestle versus your water. But first, the government's mass spying organization in the UK, the Government Communication Headquarters, GCHQ, has joined Twitter in an attempt to woo the public. Hello, world, was their first tweet. So after Edward Snowjob and Bill Binney and Mark Klein and Russ Tice and Thomas Drake exposed GCHQ's mass indiscriminate surveillance program, the organization wants to clean up its public image and their social media presence will be used to further the government's narrative. The government uses the threat of terrorism to erode the rights of its citizens. Apparently it needs to hoard all our personal information to keep Britain safe. GCHQ has the ability to turn on our microphones and cameras on our computers, listen to our phone calls, and track our locations while collecting all sorts of data about what we do online, as we've been reporting for years. So, James, essentially, this is another kind of ham-fisted PR attempt from the powers that shouldn't be, and we'll remind folks, actually, when the NYPD tried this a couple of years ago to predictably bad results. Is there more kind of learning opportunity in here, James, other than just kind of laughing at how how foolish they seem? Well, yes, I think we need to reflect on it a little bit harder because my first reaction, and I'm sure most people's first reaction is, well, good. I mean, they deserve to be ridiculed. Um, and it, that's a good sign that people are aware of this and they're on, you know, they're on the ball and they, they're not taking it. But the, the sort of second order um, reaction to this is, well, in a way, it still normalizes the presence of these groups. It still gets it to the point where, okay, people recognize and they understand that the NSA, the G GCHQ, uh, CSIS in Canada, all these organizations are spying on people all the time. And, you know, here we are, we're, we're making fun of them online. But it changes nothing. It doesn't do anything whatsoever. Um, and it really just normalizes their presence in our day-to-day -day life. It's like, hey, we know you're listening. Okay, so now what? Um, so there has to be some deeper reaction to this. I mean, I hope that people don't just accept this. Um, it is good to mock and ridicule the powers that shouldn't be, be uh, to expose their 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 uh, ridiculousness in all sorts of different ways. But there has to be a second order reaction, and that's what I'm more interested in. So uh, we'll throw in a link to my um, solutions about the uh, the turn off the NSA, nullify the NSA, and uh, we'll we'll. Take it from there. I mean, there, there has to be more reaction to this than simply mo mocking them. And I think we talked about at some point, it's probably been a while ago, James, how, how even things like The Onion have led us to a point to where it normalizes all that. And we laugh at it and we have a good chuckle and it is really cutting, well-written satire. Oh, Facebook is the CIA. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. And we know that and we acknowledge it. And again, we just kind of move on and we unfortunately continue to use all of those things. So we'll have to include those flashback links, James. And, and again, that's the My NYPD was a story back in April of 2014 where they were trying to be, you know, shiny, happy, officer friendly. And people just posted brutal accounts and photos of all kinds of police brutality. So our second story this week, James, on episode 269 of New World Next Week, Obama just gave warmonger Henry Kissinger the Distinguished Public Service Award. The Nation reported Kissinger again. Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter honored Heinz A. Kissinger at the Pentagon by presenting the former Secretary of State with the Distinguished Public Service Award, apparently the highest award the Department of Defense has for private citizens. Ash Carter himself deserves an award for understatement, calling the man who is responsible directly or indirectly for the deaths of millions of people in Southeast Asia, East Timor, Bangladesh, and Southern Africa, among other places, unique in the annals of American diplomacy. Kissinger, Carter said, quote, demonstrated how serious thinking and perspective can deliver solutions to seemingly intractable problems, end quote. As to the allegations of war crimes, quote, the fact is, said Kissinger, he and Richard Nixon, quote, were engaged in good causes. Now, James, there's a surprisingly brutal cartoon from Forbes that basically show Henry Kissinger getting what they call the Gatorade bucket treatment, and they're dumping a bucket of blood on Kissinger. Kind of surprising, and, and again, that's sort of that way that shows that, that comedy and satire can be used to hammer home a really important point. So Kissinger is all over the place recently, as 
he has been for the last several decades. So, James, just as we're learning today, as we're taping this, at least here in the States, it's May 18th to me, Trump and Kissinger hold foreign policy huddle in New York. Donald Trump met with Secretary of State Henry Kissinger in New York, the latest in his efforts to strengthen his foreign policy bona fides. Trump's motorcade rolled into Kissinger's home around 3 p.m., where the low-profile meeting lasted about an hour. Trump aides say the presumptive GOP presidential nominee and 92-year-old diplomat have spoken over the phone multiple times and that Trump requested the face-to-face. Trump met with another well-known GOP diplomat, BCCI, Iran-Contra criminal, and bin Laden family associate. His name is James Baker, James A. Baker III, someone who's been quite well-known for many, many a year, but I think whose name is worth mentioning and bringing back as, again, these are what I think John Hankey would call some, some big devils that have been around for a long time. So a couple of other notes on Kissinger, James, just as we're you know, kind of barreling into this presidential selection, seemingly interminable presidential selection 2016. Back in September 2014, Hillary Clinton calls Henry Kissinger a friend, praises his commitment to democracy, an article where they talk about how Hillary Clinton has written a review of Henry Kissinger's new book, World Order. Or how about March 2015 when Kissinger met Xi, and where they talk about how the two world powers... U.S. and China were now in a position to set the global agenda. Or very recently, February 2016, Putin meets old friend Kissinger visiting Russia, where they talk about how Vlad and Heinz have had over 10 face-to-face meetings so far. So, James, it would kind of look like it's all the same all the same criminals, all the same big devils, but haven't you heard this time? It's totally different, man. It's a political revolution. Get on board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, woo, hope and change 2016, right? Um, yeah, no, it's everyone bows to the kiss, the ring of Kissinger, the Kissinger ring. And let's keep in mind and keep in perspective who Kissinger is. He is not the source or the root of this evil, this problem. He is just the messenger. He's the representative. He was David Rockefeller's lackey for, for a long time and probably still is. He's the representative of the, the oligarchy. And he goes around and makes his little diplomatic calls and everyone bends over and kisses the ring and okay yes sir we'll implement this agenda he's advised every every republican government uh he was as quietly advising bush behind the scenes before it was uh, revealed several years after the fact oh yeah he's been advising them on the iraq war the whole time uh he's meeting with uh, or he's clinton's old friend he's putin's old friend he's she's old friend he's meeting with trump Um, They are all on the same team, ultimately. They are all part of the establishment. Every single politician who's meeting with Kissinger and having these backroom deals is on the team. And I would love a politician who would stand up and say, you are a mass murderer and a war criminal. I will not even meet with you. Get out of my face. And... I mean, the only one who's even come close to that is Bernie Sanders making fun of Hillary Clinton being on the same team as Kissinger. But Sanders isn't the savior either. There is no political savior going to come from the sky to save you this election cycle or any election cycle. And hopefully people are waking up to this fact. And Kissinger is the perfect representative of that. He is this this representative, this messenger, this harbinger of evil that goes around from place to place. And everyone you know, bows to the throne and uh, nothing's changing this election cycle. No, I, James, I've, I've joked often on Media Monarchy through the years that maybe in some ways the best good news you could ever kind of wake up and hear is that Henry Kissinger's plane had to be diverted and making an emergency landing in Chile where he was immediately arrested and will be tried as the longtime war criminal. He's so far pretty slippery and has escaped any of that, which again would show you how high up his connections would go. And I would also say, James, as we were, you know, we talk off mic a little bit about the presidential selection 2016 dog and pony show and ultimately i would say if any of these guys or gals were really a challenge to the system they'll end up taking an unfortunate plane ride or car crash as we see time and time and time again so speaking of elections james our third and final story this week i guess is a little bit of good news with a little bit of bad news not silver lining i suppose cascade locks oregon considers alternate actions after Nestle plant voted down. So this comes from our local NBC affiliate KGW. They reported this morning, 
Hood River County residents may have voted to ban a proposed Nestle water bottling plant. But the town of Cascade Locks said it could pursue other options to allow the corporation to operate after all. A measure to ban commercial water bottling plants passed with 68% of the vote during the primary election Tuesday night, last night. Every precinct in the county besides Cascade Locks voted in favor of the ban. In Cascade Locks, residents voted against the ban 58% to 42 The measure stops Nestle Waters from bottling spring water in Cascade Locks and operating a bottling plant in the small town. We took on one of the largest corporations in the world and won, said Aurora Del Val, secretary of Local Water Alliance, the local group that sponsored the ballot measure. In a statement, Nestle said it was disappointed by the outcome. While we firmly believe this decision on a county primary ballot is not in the best interest of Cascade Locks, we respect the democratic process, said Nestle spokesman Dave Palais. Environmental groups argued the plant would create pollution and put a vital resource at risk, but the Cascade Locks City Council supported Nestle's plan because it would bring 50 jobs to the economically struggling small town. Gordon Zimmerman, city administrator for Cascade Locks, said he wasn't surprised the ban passed. He also said city officials will discuss options for moving forward during the next council meeting next week, May 23rd. There's some legal precedent for county charters not being able to override city charters. The council will consider a range of options. He said legal action is unlikely, but not out of the question. The vote indicated the people of Cascade Locks are in favor of continuing a relationship with Nestle. If Nestle indicated an interest to continue, the city will continue to pursue it because our citizens voted in opposition of the restriction. A spokeswoman for Nestle said the company is considering an option in Cascade Locks, but would not specify a definitive plan. So, James, just the brief explanation of this. Basically, the countywide voted no, but the city within that would actually be running the plant and containing the plant, they really want it because they want these big 50 jobs. The flip side to this, James, and I don't think this went through an election, is on the other side of the country in Maine, where the Republican governor basically just gave Nestle control of a town's water for the next half century. And people did try and fight it. And the article that we'll include, again, in the show notes, everything that we mentioned on these episodes will be included in the show notes for you to do more research on your own. The activists were fighting it, but they basically note you can only kind of keep this up for so long before major corporations will beat the fight out of you. We were able to beat the fluoride going into our water here in Portland, and it was immediately kind of followed up with Nestle coming in. So although this is a victory, James, in the election, the people said we don't want the plant, the town council is still going to try and figure a way to go around and try and make this happen, James. That's right. And I I guess the obvious way to contrast this to the previous story is to say, of course, they want you caught up in the emotional con game 2016 with the four year, you know, dog and pony show that comes around to focus your attention on that. The presidential selection. Ooh, it's so important. Meanwhile, forget what's going on in your own backyard and allow these mega corporations to come in and uh, and monopolize the, the resources of the area. Whereas you can actually ha- make a difference. You can actually have a real effect on what's going on in your local area, much more so than you do on the national or international sk- stage with these ridiculous, uh, you know, dog and pony shows. So that's the obvious way to counteract this. But then again, that's also saying that Playing the political game and jumping through the political hoops is the ultimate solution to this, and I don't believe that. I still think the ultimate answer to this is stop buying Nestle's crap. Every time you buy any Nestle product or any Nestle-affiliated product, you are voting with your dollars for, yes, please, more of this. We want the corporatocracy. We want to support Nestle. That is where they get their, their money, their energy, their, their ability to, to, to do this. And so that, that's where it ultimately comes down to. It's about the personal responsibility that we have to start taking. If you want more on Nestle and the things that they're doing across the United States, not just in Oregon, not just in Maine, everywhere. Um, I have an interview from uh, August of last year with uh, Claire Burnish talking about her article on Nestle pays only $524 to extract 27 million gallons of California drinking water, contributing, of course, to the California uh, drought crisis that was going on. So people can refresh themselves with that. Claire Burnish has been continuing to do good work on Nestle and the the story there, so people can follow her reporting on that. But uh, again, it comes down to what are you going to pay 
pay for? What are you going to buy with your dollars? What are you going to do about this problem? And that's the real that's the real votes that count, the votes with your dollar. And honestly, now there's no excuse to not know what those products are. All of that information is publicly available. There are apps specifically meant to show you who owns what and what you may or may not want to put in your body. And I think we covered that on a previous New World Next Week, if I remember. We'll put in a flashback to one of those apps that you can use, uh, Boy Boy, Boycott. I believe so. I believe so. And I think there are even more recent ones, uh, you know, as the years have gone by and apps, of course, have become that much more prevalent. That, that, That again, there's really no excuse for you to go, oh, I didn't know that Arrowhead was was Nestle. That's just another brand, another water, another different label. But it's again, it all kind of goes back up to the same chain. Gosh, that's funny. That kind of seems like the overarching theme of some of the things we've talked about on this episode, James. Uh, Some of the other stories we are watching with hashtag New World Next Week are far, far too many to cover, James. I was looking at the, the tweets. They are coming at a fast and furious rate, I think, which shows that many people involved in sharing these stories using hashtag New World Next Week. CIA watchdog accidentally destroyed the copy of the torture report. And the secret Harvard meeting on synthesizing the human genome triggers debate. Meanwhile, our good friends at the TSA cashing in on $765,000 worth of forgotten loose change at local airports. And that's even double from what it was last count. Meanwhile, central banks selling off U.S. debt at a pace not seen since 1978. And as we approach 9-11 plus 15, EMS workers have to prove they provided 9-11 help. And just yesterday, the Senate has passed the bill exposing Saudi Arabia to 9-11 legal claims. This is the controversy surrounding suing the Saudis for 9-11. And again, it's tied in with the 28 pages. And there's a lot of smoke and mirrors, but there are a lot of opportunities, James, as you and I talked about a couple of weeks ago, for some 9-11 truth. I do a morning show every weekday morning via MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. I think it's been a great way to kind of go through the news each and every day and hopefully just kind of disseminate this information out, James. Well, that's the plan, and I'm glad to see that the uh, hashtag is being used so much. Please keep the stories flooding in. It's a help to us and to everyone who's following that hashtag. So uh, we'll continue to do that. And, of course, you can always send your uh, your uh, story ideas in through the email contact on mediamonarchy.com or corporatereport.com. And uh, we'll leave it there for this week. Looking forward to next week. Thank you again for three stories, James. All right, man. Thank you. Take care.